Hello everyone and welcome to the Act 17 Apologetics weblog. This is our second installment. The first one was on the miraculous Quran talking about the scientific miracle of semen being produced from between the backbone and the ribs. A lot of Muslims have emailed me since that blog and said, Nabil, you really ought to give the Quran a chance. Uh, it's saying things that are miraculous and if you have open eyes, you'll see what it's saying. Now I understand this point. Muslims often see the Quran as miraculous in its scientific statements and they want me to be able to see that too. And this is something earnest on their behalf and I really appreciate what they're saying. However, there's a big problem with it. That being that the argument for miraculous scientific accuracy is supposed to make one believe in the Quran as being the Word of God. It shouldn't be something that a Muslim has to defend. It needs to be so powerful that anyone who looks at the Quran should realize that it's miraculous because of its scientific accuracy. Problem is, when we start reading the Quran and we look at the clear scientific statements, now these statements should be miraculous and obviously miraculous if it's going to win somebody over. When we start looking at the clear scientific statements over and over and over again, we see that they're flawed. Like I said in the last vlog, uh, sperm and semen does not come from between the backbone and the ribs. This is what it obviously seems to say, and in order to defend this statement as scientifically miraculous, Muslims have to come around with alternate interpretations. Uh, this is not something that someone just reading the Quran would do if they're trying to see if it's from God or not. Another example of this uh, is, for example, the comets. Uh, it says that stars are actually uh, missiles to attack at demons, and this to one reading the Quran uh, with non-biased uh, objective views set, is seen to be something other than an actual star. It sounds like Muhammad is talking about a meteor or a meteorite. Now, when over and over and over again we see that the clear statements need to be vastly reinterpreted in order to be scientifically miraculous, someone like me is just left saying, well, why in the world should I conclude that this is scientifically miraculous? The only way to even make it scientifically coherent is by taking the words and interpreting them to mean something other than what they obviously mean. Let me put this another way. If someone said, hey Nabil, look at this book. It was written by a psychic a hundred years ago and everything that is said in there has since come true. Therefore, the psychic must have truly had psychic powers. I would say, wow, that's a pretty amazing claim. Let me see this book. Then if I read it and I see over and over and over again, claims were made that just do not sound accurate. And I say, well, this doesn't sound accurate. And the person responds by saying, aha, well, you need to interpret it to mean this. And he starts giving me a long series of interpretations. Um, that to me at the end of the day would have me say, okay, I can see why you believe what you believe. Uh, I don't think you should believe it. I certainly don't believe what you believe. I don't have any reason to reinterpret the text as much as you do. The same goes with the Quran. For the Quran, people say it is so scientifically miraculous. And I say, show me that. And I take a look at it. And I don't see any scientific miracles. All the clear statements over and over and over again are flawed. And when I bring these up with Muslims, they say, oh, well, allow me to explain it to you. Well, there's no persuasive power there. It's not persuasive at all. Don't forget, the argument from miraculous scientific accuracy is an offensive argument. It's an argument to try to bring someone towards Islam. However, at the end of the day, uh, it simply does not work in that regards. The only way it does work is for keeping people within Islam. If people in Islam are uh, trying to make their Quran sound miraculous and they're looking for ways, they will reinterpret things in order to make them sound miraculous, and that's understandable. However, it's not something that any non-Muslim would do. They would read the text and see what it actually says, let it stand for itself, without any sort of eisegesis or reinterpretation. Well, this has been an impromptu uh, response to some people via the webcam. Hopefully, these blogs are going well. Please keep us posted. Let us have your comments, and we look forward to responding. Next, we'll be talking about more embryology, specifically um, embryos being first bone, then clothed in flesh. We'll talk about this from a scientific perspective and see if this claim is scientifically miraculous. Thank you very much, and may God bless all of you.